You want to keep warm when you're feeling chilled, but you don't want to raise your heating bill. Blankets are okay, but they can slip and slide. And when you need to reach for something, your hands are trapped inside. Now, there's the EG Jersey, the jersey with sleeves. The jersey keeps you totally warm and gives you the freedom to use your hands. So now, you can work the remote or read a book in total warmth and comfort. Use your computer without being cold or enjoy a snack while staying snugly warm. EG Jersey is made of ultra-performance mega sportsy fabric with normal size sleeves. So you can move your arms and use your hands and still be wrapped in warm. Available in sizes for all so you can stay warm warm from head to toe. No more cold feet. And with EG Jersey, you can get up and still stay warm. Perfect for men, women, and children too. The ultra performance fabric keeps you totally warm and the sleeves keep your hands free. So you can snuggle your baby in your arms or keep your pet close at hand. The EG Jersey is machine washable so you'll get years of warmth and comfort. Do what you need to and stay totally warm with the EG Jersey. To order, visit Evil Geniuses GG slash jersey. Remember, you'll get the ultra soft, ultra warm jersey for just $84.95 plus processing and handling. Jersey machine washable with extra processing and handling. Local livestock and slave labor laws may apply. Visit evilgeniuses.gg slash jersey. two this best of three not gonna do a whole lot of introductions let's talk about the draft as they did pick it up i'll tell you what man these guys love the draft fast not a single second of bonus time used by uh nicks who are for whatever reason tagged under brothers but doom rounds out the final uh draft for eg skyrath jakiro Vino, dark <laughs> dark seer and doom this is going to be yet another very mid-game oriented uh draft for eg while they have to deal with the io tiny on the other side as well as tide hunter and and puck and you know, this is going to be very much about shutting down the tiny for EG. If they're able to do that, though, the rest of the heroes, as good as they can be, are really reliant on having somebody do some sort of sustained damage, and they're not going to have it without tiny. So would imagine that'll be the number one goal as EG looks ahead now to game two. Another fast pick on the Elder Titan. We'll see if they can change things around, uh, at least this game. And the Tiny Wisp, I haven't seen them do this since they actually had Ush on their roster. I know that TC can still play tiny, though. And as far as EG's lineup goes, the Doom, the Darkseer, Darkseer probably off lane, Venomancer as a core. Might be mid, actually. And might just see the Doom farming top, because I think that would be a little bit better for EG. I think, especially up against the dual lane, which is presumably going to be this Wisp Tiny. Maybe you go something like Veno and like Skywrath, and then just have the, the Jakiro helping out the Doom up top to zone out the Tidehunter with Liquid Fire. I think that could work. Although, yeah. I, th I think the last time I saw a TC play Doom, it was just... It wasn't his fault, but they drafted it as like a completely one-core lineup, and yep. uh, they just got owned. But we'll have to see. This is more than just a one-core lineup. This is kind of like a, a two-and-a-half, maybe. I mean, Venno's not the biggest core, though, so we'll have to see how they can contest in the late game if they do have a good start on the side of Brudas with this tiny <laughs> wisp. 
Well, I think that EG is going to have to come into this looking at it as a timing-based game. Like, they need to peak at a certain time and accomplish, oh, and basically be willing to close the game out within a certain timing window. Otherwise, Tiny just being Tiny, once he gets his scepter, he's going to farm quickly. You know, it's going to be known that, I mean, the, you know, Knicks, even though they're, their record's not the, not the best and they are considered by most to be a Tier 2 team, they nonetheless know how to execute with something as simple as a tiny and a wisp all they have to do is make sure they they stay split off uh find your jungle or find farm in your jungle find farm as you split push lanes and then if there's an engagement relocate in and that's going to free the map up considerably for the tide and the puck which do need you know a fair amount of farm priority early on and um yeah i think eg again i, I would say say around 25 to 35 minutes is when they're probably going to want to try to close this out Otherwise, unless Arteezy just gets gigantic and Doom becomes the hell of a carry and he explodes, this will almost certainly be a, a Midas game for him, one would imagine. He's not going to out-carry a Tiny in the ultra late game. Doom sure is handy, but uh, he's got two other targets he's going to uh, have to decide uh, between in terms of Doom targets. So uh, the Tide and the Puck obviously needing to shut down as well. Looks like they will go ahead and head out as two for now. There's Arteezy and Universe heading down to bottom. In mid, PPD will be on the Jakiro, so no core Jakiro this game. Zai's on the Skywrath and Fear. Looks like he's going to end up being your uh, core Vino, as you had mentioned. And want to see how they end up doing it. I really like the way EG tends to do their Vino. Again, just trying to farm him in general, just for no general purpose. Not the best, but whenever you have a, a lineup like this, a composition that is very timing window based, a Vino that's well leveled and well moneyed can usually be a huge asset be it purchasing uh, an early mech be it purchasing an early pipe whatever you happen to need this is going to be kind of a roaming slash jungle doom actually with zai soloing mid i believe so zai's got total mid items with this um null talisman and the tango so that's that's all he bought and he's actually setting up shop in mid so he's going to be mid against presumably the wisp tiny which is not too bad in the sense that he can totally trade auto attacks and then some with fluff and stuff on the wisp because one he has no armor whatsoever two he has no the stats because he's going fast bottle and that's about it but if they do get some good levels onto this tiny wisp they can easily kill skywrath if he's out of position so he's got to be careful for that but in the early stages of the game in the early levels uh, i think he will be fine this thing actually ppd is going to help him out block and probably sit here and maybe do a 2v2 situation here in mid so dual lane versus that and then Arteezy farming up in the jungle, and then a 1v1 situation up top against uh, Ix Mike for the for the Venomancer, and obviously the Venomancer will have a better time. Let's see, how much region does Mike have? Now he's got eight tangos in a salve. I think he'll be fine up here for a while. More importantly, he'll get his levels, and he won't have that much of a problem getting some early gold at the very least. Like you said, Fear should, in theory, be able to zone him out, especially once he gets level 2, level 3. But I actually really like this adjustment from EG because now you have two ranged heroes against the melee hero in TC um, on the tiny. And Fluff is going to be spending a lot of his time back in the jungle stacking and moving, trying to make sure he controls the runes and so on. So in theory, they should be able to really burn through his region quickly and uh, try to force him back out of lane. Early bottle up on Fluff, though, so he'll be there to regen him. But still at least complicating things, you know, trying to slow down his uh, item progression early on. Yep. The only problem, too, though, is that while Puck is going to have a good time down here against Darkseer, and by good time, I mean he's not going to really, really get killed because he can't really zone out a ranged hero like this that can port to an orb. But I, I'm curious to see how effective the Elder Titan can be in killing Universe. They, there is a chance, though, if you, if you catch him with a nice stop while he's trying to surge because the surge duration is only three seconds. So if you catch him, it's probably one second's already gone by. And then the two seconds with the sleep will actually stop the rest of the uh, movement speed bonus from Universe. He's going to try to contest this bottom rune. And he actually is going to surge around. And here comes PPD to help out. Wiper's going to have to use the stop. Wiper can take a little bit of damage, though. PPD is level two, has He's a dual dead. breath, and he looks like he might fall. Yep, surge is up, ion shells up. Yeah, they're just going to chase him down. And Universe actually taking a fair amount of damage. Brax doing a good job of blocking him. And PPD there. Universe does manage to salve up in time. Now Brax is in trouble. Brax has no mana. That's going to be one. Does PPD get off another liquid fire? He's right in range. I don't know. that. that is it going to be enough to burn him down? It's going to be close. Uh, the tango is the only thing that's saving him. He definitely dead if he didn't tango. So PPD rotating to bottom, finding himself a first blood and damn near two. Yeah, that was a freebie again by Whitebeard. He just 
tried to get the stomp off, but he was literally one auto attack away from death, and he was just like, oh, yeah, I'll take you, and then let's look for the next one. And so, uh, yeah, not not too good here in the safe lane. That was what I was worried about for Brutus, with just just even 1v2 against the darks here I was worried about, but now with the rotation of the Jakiro, it's even easier. And mid, how's Zai doing? He's got 10 CS compared to the 10 of Tiny, so he's doing just fine. Our TZ roaming around, getting a couple creeps, probably staying here for level 3. They're actually going to roam on TC. Not going to get him, though. Stomp catches Arteezy behind the tower. TC's heading over. Two points in the avalanche. Not able to get there quickly enough. Do want to point out, by the way, that Brax, that was his last, well, I should say his last bit of rejinx. He is back to full, so I'm going to guess he probably had a self, too. But that tango that he used was his last tango for sure. And so barely surviving what could have been a very disastrous encounter there. Talk about top lane. Tide is actually winning here, and this is what I figured. Mike's not going to have a big problem. Um, he has burned through a fair amount of regen. Four tangos in a salve already in mid. Zai dodges the stomp from Whitebeard. Going to take some damage on his way back out. But I feel like EG does need to make a priority of, of stopping Mike sometime soon. He's going He's already level five and a half-ish, and we'll have level six soon. He's about half a level ahead of fear as we speak. There's his arc boots done. And one would imagine it's going to be a very early blink dagger unless they really give him some attention. Yeah, the rotation from Wisp helped get help Mike get a kill actually on the Veno. And actually, Wisp is coming back. There is no lane ward here. And yeah, they're going to dive him with the gush and the balls coming out. Fear is taking a lot of damage. Gets a Gale off, which is just not going to be enough. TP rotation way too late for TPD. So nice rotations here from Fluff. I think he's doing the right decision by leaving uh, Tiny in mid and trying to find space elsewhere. And Mike, as a result, is going to get level 6. He actually can kill PPD with a one one creep kill. They're, they don't, probably don't even need the Ravage, actually. Mm. But they're probably going to use the secure. Here actually comes a TP from Fear. Maybe they go in yet again. I think they can, actually. Once he gets the 6, yeah. Fade it out a little bit. Out. Yeah, this is yep, good. There's a Gale. Ravage will catch them. They did spread out some. PPD very low, has no mana now. And actually surprised PPD would put himself in that position. Fear eats all the spirit damage, and there's going to be a kill from Io. So Fluff tallies his second kill in just about as many minutes. In the meantime, oh, Brax barely able to escape. Arteezy has a haste, though. He's got him. So using that Ion Shell, and they... Ooh, yep, no, he ends up dying. And Puck doesn't get the XP, but still, uh, losing him there, kind of a big deal. One more spirit and one more auto attack will do it. Fear just barely outrunning it right now. Uh, is right in front. Here comes a TPN. They got to decide if they want to pursue. That's going to be PPD back in. And now Mike happy to go ahead and pull back. So things going Staw's way uh, here early on. TC will be silenced and caught with a concussive shot. Our TC's behind him, not yet level six. TC turns as the silence wears off and gets off the avalanche. So fair amount of damage, but no direct follow-up from EG, and yeah, we are looking at an Evil Genius's lead that is very, very tenuous, only about 400 gold in their advantage, while the XP is actually favoring Snarrang. Action on to Zai, as he gets a concussive shot, actually. He tossed his fluff to maybe try to get some slow from Tether. Thought he was very, very close in range of the avalanche stun there, but just didn't feel confident enough in it, as the slow from concussive shot, plus the just high base movement speed from Skyrath, 375. Um, was just enough to actually get him away, so. Bottom lane, Brax, he's very close to six. That's going to be a huge uh, ding for him. He does hit it. Nope, he actually gets denied, so he's going to need one more creep. Arteezy trying to make something happen of this, but uh, I don't think they actually get this kill unless he has Doom up and ready to go. Nope, he's level four. Not really under understanding the purpose of the Doom pick right now. Uh, I don't see them getting a lot out of it. He's going to need to get some more attention and some more time to himself. Was Coil whiffed? They are going to try. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're actually trying to go here. Brax is just going to kill him. He and Fluff should have no problem securing this kill. Uh, I guess Sword Shirt does make it a little more complicated. There's a concussive shot. Brax caught from behind is silenced. Universe still hanging around the back as well. Arteezy low health, but burning some damage on. There's the surge, but he doesn't want to dive into the tier one and certainly doesn't want to dive with the spirits. Offering sufficient damage. Whitebeard making his way over is level four. And Fluff and Brax now tucked under their own tower. PPD is going to spot Whitebeard as soon as he drops the ward. And he's going to be taking the long road back behind his own tier one. This is going to isolate two heroes at the top and leave one in mid. Unaccounted for. Ice Path does manage to catch the edge of Whitebeard. Should end up dead here, but Arteez is so low. And of all the people to be leading with that, yeah, that's a free kill for Fluff. 
And to be honest, EG at this point is just making bad decisions. These are borderline feeds. Like, Arteezy, without Scorched Earth, had no business going in with his health that low. I don't and know what... Huh. Go ahead. They're actually pursuing PPD. They probably get this kill. And then Toss Easy. comes in from Tiny. I, I think he could have actually came in a little bit earlier, maybe get two, but nonetheless does get that one kill. That would have been an even cleaner exchange, actually, if Brax didn't Radiant's miss the coil. But uh, unfortunately couldn't get that off. And Universe does get the tower bottom, which I think is very important when I talk about being aggressive in the offlane. And he's going to have very early fighting power. And if he did decide to go mech, which it might go for fear, it would make a lot more sense this game. Well, TC's in great shape compared to the rest of the map. He's number two in CS, only uh, second only to the Darkseer, but him being comparatively more farmed in the map is such a big deal. He's gone treads, bottle, and we might see him go straight up for his scepter now. Could slide something like drums in there if he really wants to just ease into it. But Brax is more than halfway to his blink dagger now, so he's in good shape. Uh, the Tide coming up on that mark as well. He's about 900 Radiant's towards the blink. And something we didn't mention is until he does get blinked, the Toss Ravage is actually very effective in the right situations. So it's not as if he has no mobility at all so long as TC is next to him. Yeah, and you can use the Toss ability, as you mentioned, for so many different heroes. It's awesome and fun to see. I was just theorycrafting like Toss plus Black Hole is so fun to see. <laughs> But yeah, Toss Ravage is, could be very effective. Here comes a smoke actually from TC and Fluff and stuff. They break the tether right away. They probably want to get level 6 on Fluff instead. And Brax goes down yet again, bottom. Whitebeard comes in, catches two with the stomp. And we'll be able to retreat. They're rotating Fluff and TC down. And Zai just decides to try to get out, knows he's dead. And even cancelled his TP. Universe in the meantime able to surge himself to safety, but... Uh, they end up getting the puck, which is nice. They give up the Skywrath, which is not, is because <clears throat> they did end up giving it up to TC. 8-4, to four, EG being doubled up in terms of kill count. Overall metrics tell us they're still owners of a marginal gold lead, and the experience has been basically static for uh, Nyx, even though they have been in the lead in that department. It hasn't really been going up. And for Arteezy, he's got his glove of haste, but now just the long road to Midas. And he's going to need it soon. Like, I feel like he's really, really underleveled right now and is not particular. I mean, he's the second lowest level in the game. He's level six, while most of the other map is level eight. I just heard a coil. And, yeah, he whiffed it again, didn't he? Um, well, let's see. I, I, sorry, I was looking yeah, at it was, bit. Yeah, it was, it, it was down here. Another coil. <laughs> I mean, this is a pretty, sorry, but it's a pretty easy hit spell to hit. But maybe <laughs> just not feeling. I don't know. I, I don't know what to tell you. But is he close to his blink at least? He's about 600 gold away, but he doesn't have upgraded boots either. So he is very, very squishy if he does get caught outside of an orb. And Universe, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm waiting to see what kind of item build he would like. But same thing with Fear, as they're both saving up a lot of gold. These are heroes I feel like you want to spend gold very quickly, but mm. they, maybe they just haven't quite decided what they want to buy. I'd really like to see a mech out of Fear. He's got 1,800 gold towards him now. They, they're just going to have to fight at some point, and being able to heal everyone up after the inevitable ravage sure would be nice. Mike and Fluff going head hunting under cover of smoke. Under Unable to find anyone that they don't already see on the map. PPD in mid makes the most likely target. And TC may just spam this wave. There's a nice pass, gets the toss off, toss off on the PPD. Here comes Mike. Mike has ravage if he needs it. And PPD. Gets off a macro pyre, but that's it before he ends up dead. Down at bottom, we see a dive onto Brax. He does get doomed, and they're going to get this kill as well. Mike will ravage. Brax will nonetheless die, but he wants a return kill on Arteezy. And we'll be able to get it with an anchor smash. So another favorable exchange for Sneaky Nix Assassins, as they also are going to be able to take the mid-tier one as well. They get 10 to 5. Zai whiffs on the Mystic Flare, but TC still taking a fair amount of damage. However, overcharge. Helping keep him alive. There's a toss from Fluff, and Fluff's actually doing a lot of damage with those spirits. And yeah, he's just going to kill Zai. Fluff ends up dead, but that's totally worth it. Completely worth it. To sacrifice him for a kill that Tiny gets full credit for. And yeah, this is actually looking really bad for EG. Um, that's it, that gold graph seems very dramatic. It's a small amount, relatively. Uh, but in terms of the way the game's just been very close all game, it does seem quite like quite a lot. 
but I just don't know what they're going to do with the Doom. And TC is, yeah, he's rushing his his uh, scepter. He's gonna, he's halfway there, man. Yeah, that's really good for him. I don't know if that dive was totally worth it, just because Fluff had a really nice streak that went the way of his eye. And Fear, I was wondering what he was going to buy, and I was wondering why he's hoarding his gold. It's because he went for a blink here. Um, I don't know if I really agree with this. I think that just getting an Axe is going to be much more effective, especially against a Tiny and the Relocate combo, but maybe he just feels under too much pressure. He is 0-3-0. and 0. Okay, I didn't even notice that, but he has died a lot. But this is just very interesting to me. Either either mech or just even the mana boot, just because you do cut through a lot of your mana. Like, spending all this mana on your Plague Wards right now doesn't even have enough for one Gale. And even if he did, he actually wouldn't be able to cast any Plague Wards after that. Relocate in mid, actually. On to yep, Zai, who gets in. a solo kill on the Wiper before he dies. And there's going to be the Doom on the Fluff, Arteezy. Giving Pursuit, TC's on the low ground, Fluff on the high. Fluff has the Fluff, oh, barely missed with the, with the uh, Ice Path. And because of that, able to make it away. In the meantime, Mike in mid, just basically playing the big tanky watermelon that he is. Chasing out PPD now. Look at that. 200 damage from his Anchor Smash and PPD hurting a lot. He's going to make it 12 to 7 and did watch in mid the solo kill that Zai was able to tally. Still feel like EG really needs to get into gear though because we have yet to see the Tiny. Yeah, Tiny's three quarters of the way done. More so to his Scepter. And I don't even know what they do. Like if you're EG, what's the plan? Do You have to be feeling a sense of urgency. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Maybe just keep farming up and defending when they have when they try to push for I, I I don't know like yeah I, I agree with you I think they're line, last time I saw each draft a lineup like this where they had well, honestly they drafted something similar last game where they had really no no that's not true storm can t completely take over a game w way more than a doom can or a veno can so that's not true this the last time I saw each draft something like this they lost because they just didn't have the tools in the late game at all and they didn't snowball hard enough. So I don't know. I'm, I'm very scared for them. I think that this blink is a bit of a mistake on fear. He's actually going to go for a Midas too, I think. So I do like that, though. I think that they need to be able to contest in the late game. I'll tell you what's weird, though, is Whitebeard, who's 1-3-2, sitting behind mid, who still doesn't have boots yet. 15 minutes. <laughs> Soul Ring, upgraded wand, no boots. <laughs> I don't even know, man. It is... Yeah. It is tough going. Whitebeard has not been having the greatest couple of games and speaking of yeah he is one and three oh and three on the venomancer though so they have been able to really get a lot done with him, um and pressuring fear fear and getting kills there but i agree with you i think i, I mech blink is fine like on a core venomancer mech blink pipe uh, is my favorite build to see just because it's so well rounded <laughs> oh no <laughs> mike smoked mid to try to get this solo ravage kill on veno and then he just walked right by him, but then he walked to the right, and Venno walked up and just blinked away, and he kind of missed each other, unfortunate. The spirit came out from Wiper to two, and they probably suspect he's around there somewhere, but they just don't know exactly where. It is nighttime too, so it might be hard to see. If it was daytime, he might actually show just a glimpse of himself, but he's fine for now. TC, as you mentioned, I think, let me check the courier. He has a blade of alacrity. Yeah, he's actually got his axe and a thousand gold. No, never mind. He just bought his blade, so... Has his axe completed now, so pretty damn good for him. And the Wisp who netted all those kills, is, since he's 5, 1, and 3, when he got doomed in mid there, I was wondering why he wasn't dying. It's because he's got this Vite Booster. So he's actually yep. very tanky. Yeah, I like the pickup from Fluff. And, you know, this is up Zai actually being targeted by IX Mike. Whitebeard's right there with him. And those, that's really good illusion, Micro. They will really locate in and secure the kill very easily. There's an Earth Splitter just to cut any kind of a response. I, I feel like EG's playing terrible this game. Like, they're just being caught out. Their decision-making is not nearly as tight. And their lanes and their draft were really just wonky. Yeah, and I feel like they haven't really got much out of the Jakiro pick either. No. He, like, the, the only time... That, like, he looked really good in the beginning, but that's just because they caught out... Uh, I think it was Whitebeard in the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he just came bottom, he's like, oh, yeah, you're one hit. Let me just auto-attack you for a free first blood. And then, but I haven't really seen him push too many towers. That tower push bottom was basically all universe. Fear, he's trying to be a little bit crafty Dyer's here top tower. by sitting Dyer's in the trees, staying in the trees, as it were. And the Midas is actually up onto universe. So he is gearing towards the late game against Dyer's the Tiny Wisp. The EG, the old EG way. He's had a four staff before that too, so I like that. I don't know if I like the Midas though on Darkseer. I like it on Venno, but I don't know about the Darkseer. 
don't know that I like Midas at all this game for EG. Because what Nyx can do is, is comfortably say, okay, we can just farm and drag this out as late as we want. And all things being equal, we're going to win. And they have complete control of the, <clears throat> complete control of the map right now. Their gold lead and experience lead are relatively small, even though it is 17 minutes. But now Sai up front once again. Look at the damage output he takes just from Toss and Anchor Smash. And they're going to get him again. Got off Mystic Flare. Hits Mike for a little bit. Mike does have his Ravage. There's a Gale from behind. Mike has to decide. Use it or lose it. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and expend it. That catches two. Universe down in the front. Arteezy next as he's tossed. And yeah, this one has already come apart for EG. Like, I honestly don't think they have the damage to kill anyone unless it's like three on one. I don't think they can win a five on fight at all. Yeah, that was just a weird, like, wonky setup. Here comes a relocate onto bottom for... The Jakiro PPD, he wastes his TP, unfortunately. That's an easy, easy kill. Got actually really good damage onto the tower, though. So I think that's actually a trade that's fine for them. This tower's going to get denied. They lose that. Relocate for Jakiro kill and a tower. I think that's that's a good trade for EG. But as you mentioned, they're, they're definitely way behind. And the question is, do they have an answer for this? Tiny with an Aghanims and a Wisp behind his back. And it's not just a Wisp. It's a Wisp that's really farmed. Like, yeah. very tanky. So you can't just, like easily oh yeah let's just kill the wisp it's not that easy because he's got a fight booster this leads me to believe what an atos no he could go for soul or a, um, a bloodstone as well but i think atos would actually be pretty nice as well like for the well, i mean how often do you sig how often do you end up six slotting your io i mean he can go whatever he wants and just have the casual fight booster for the game if he wants sure but yeah like the decision of universe to go midas here i don't like that at all i mean this is a lineup that has every advantage over you in the late game to begin with um, and I, I, I don't know, like mech, pipe, something, anything to give yourself a little bit more combat potential. Even if you end up going something like a Crimson Guard, like, a, you know, against the, the right click of Tiny, at least that helps now. It helps in the immediate future. Yeah, I, and, I, 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 I know the reason behind these Midas's though. Like it, it's, it's just because they, they don't feel they can fight them at all. So why would they try to fight them? So instead they're going to just split push and dodge fights. And so since we're not fighting them anyway, why not try to maximize my farm? So that's the whole that's the whole logic behind it. I'm not saying it's the right thing to do. Like I, I like the Midas actually on Venno because I feel like he will benefit a little bit more from it in the late stages of the game, whereas I think Darkseer and then again I don't know. I've seen Darkseers take over a game, especially for Universe. Like he's one of the best Darkseers in the world, so I don't know, we'll have to just wait and see if it if it is gonna be a correct decision in the end. Now, just because if they lose this game, it's not to say, oh, they bought Midas, so they lost. Like this is like a we need to try to do something. We need the best chance to to win in the late game, and I think that this probably is it, actually. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. EG under siege. Two bla two uh, blinks up, and there's going to be one. Managed to only get one with it, but they did get the Sky Wrath. Relocate out, and where did they go? Didn't even see. Uh, just back. Uh, Bluff and TC help clean the tower. Like EG can't fight them, and it's not going to be long. Like let's see what who's building what here. If, uh, is that a four staff recipe for Mike? So going the typical build we tend to see the most. If one of these heroes gets up a pipe, they're gonna be able to high ground so easily. There's gonna be a vacuum. Brax may be in some trouble. Face shifts the ice path and can't do anything else. Uses his wand charges. Gets the old karate chop. The back of the head by Universe, so. Do end up getting at least one high value kill and one general kill as Whitebeard has given up a number of those. Not just this game, but the game before as well. He's one for two. Still, that is uh, Brax's fourth death as well. And now Fear engaged upon. Gets off the Gale. He's going to try to run damage output from Nyx a little too high. And this is going to be a full Salt Cure as done on TC here, like now. Like, you're, that is huge. Like, he is monstrously big. Yep, and it's going to be a Bloodstone coming out for Fluff, which I think is really nice because <laughs> if you actually do need to suicide, you can totally heal up your team. It's really nice to just give you lots of mana, be very tanky. And when you have a bigger mana pool like that too, you can heal up people for a longer period of time. I actually, when I first saw it, I thought it was like, what the hell is this? But when I look at it again, I think there's a couple items that you really need on him. And although I would like to see the Vlads just because it's so good with Tiny. I, I actually would have preferred to see Vlads before. But since he was so farmed, he's figured, hey, I'm really tanky. If they try to target me, which they should do anyway. Like, you should always target the Wisp first, but this makes right. it a little bit harder to do. So, in that sense, I do like it. Well, TC finishes the Assault Cuirass. And they are continuing to just collapse the map, as we can see. 
And, you know, the lead is still not insurmountable for EG, but I just, again, like, what, Dyer's I don't know how they fight. Like, it, you rack your brain, they, the Yules will be up at some point for Peter, and that's fine. But, I mean, the blink on fear, he's going, like, he's just got his level two ulti. I don't know. Like, I think EG's just going to wait for mistakes, I think. And to be honest, it's rare you say this. I just don't like their draft. Like, usually EG pretty much on point. Um, and even in, on things that look odd, they kind of show you the revelation. But I don't think this is a good draft. I don't think it was drafted well based on what they saw. The IO and the Tiny came out in the middle of the draft, not the end. So it wasn't like some big surprise. And they're just getting run over at this point. And Nyx is just going to be able to keep piling on lead. Yeah, well, there's a couple of things with it. Like, one, I don't think they've got really much out of this Jakiro pick. Like, when they pick Jakiro in the past, it's on either a core for Universe or or actually even Fear will play it sometimes, or even Zai. And Zai prioritizes a lot more farm on the hero, and I think this is a hero that benefits a lot from farm. We've seen that with Ichi. They own with Jakiro when they get an early um, Yules, but look at the Yules timing now for PPD, and this is just because he plays the, the strict 5 role. It's going to be like a 27-minute, maybe, wait, no, probably a lot longer than that, 30-minute plus Yules yeah. for Jakiro, which is just, if you've seen the stats on it, it's not, it's not promising. <laughs> it's not encouraging. Mm. So I, I think that's the part of the reason, too. Is they, they prioritized the Jakiro pick for good reason, but they didn't get anything out of it this game. Also, I had never seen EG win with Arteezy on Doom. And that's not to say he plays it wrong. I just think that they, when they run him running around as a... <laughs> As a, uh, oh, actually, action mid. Brax goes in. Coil is sitting, making Zai sit there. Zai doing a ton of damage, actually. Ravage from Mike, though, to follow it. Here's the relocate. Actually didn't bring anyone with him. So they do not manage to get Zai. That's misplayed by, by Snaw, I think. Why didn't Fl where, where, Fluff was next to TC, I thought. I don't know. But anyway. Zai forced himself to, down the hill, I think. Ah. And then he put himself in an awkward position. TC tossed something at him and tried to kill him and was really close to, but just wasn't enough. So EG finally gets a kill unanswered. Still a long road to go. And just to come back to your point, I agree. Like, it's not just that, you know, he was on, that Arteezy was on the Doom. It's the way they ran him. This roaming kind of, you know, let's just run at towers and dive kind of Doom. Like, he was trying to dive tier one, tier one bottom without Doom at like level four. At like what was it eight nine minutes in it just it like it didn't make a ton of sense like it just wasn't a strategy that was going to give you a huge chance for success for success universe is fairly well farmed he has a bkb up and in terms of net worth yeah he's second on the board tc though going to run right into ppd he's got io behind him and peter never had a chance to react universe now trying to make a run for it four staffs himself to the low ground and yeah i i actually i I don't know. We'll see. There's going to be another coil on his eye. Like, Snarl is just playing this well. Like, they're getting kills so ridiculously easy. It's not going to be long before they can start to just five, man. Yeah, but if, if you look at the, the net worth, it's not actually that, that, they're that much further ahead. I mean, I, I agree. I think that their their late game is much stronger. Actually, here comes the Yules on to Arteezy, who doesn't have a blink or anything like that. If he gets caught in the avalanche as well, yeah, he's dead. He's more than dead. Just bought a Mithril Hammer before he died, so that's probably going to be towards a BKB. Oh, no. Sorry. That's on the Tiny. Never mind. So, yeah. Yep, that's his BKB. <laughs> that's Tiny's BKB. Never mind. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've been going back and checking them. And the net worth chart, again, <laughs> the problem is, is it's not, you know, it's like, yes, I have seen teams come back from 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 gold behind. But this team from EG should be winning not not break even not losing and not losing considerably at this stage of the game like this is when their their lineup has to be excelling because they have nothing that transitions decently to late this game so they're just going to run out of time i mean and i actually do like the way that nix is playing this i think they could have fallen back and played the last 10 minutes 15 minutes as a okay we are winning where you have the advantage so let's let's play to not lose let's just fall back farm and unless we absolutely have to not prioritize movement or kills, let's just keep everyone safe because we know EG cannot go toe-to-toe -to -toe with us late. Instead, they've been playing to win, and it's been really impressive to see. This is one of the better games I've seen out of Snaw ever. Yep. And Aegis goes out to TC. He's going to have a completed BKB in just a second. 
which is very, very good for him. And the good thing is that even if they doom the TC in fights, he's not going to take any damage because yep. um, because of the overcharge to the Wisp. And the problem is if they doom the Wisp, they'll then Tiny has free reign, and I don't even think dooming the Wisp is going to kill him because he's so tanky with a completed Bloodstone at this moment. Who do you doom then? I think you have to doom either the Puck or you have to doom the Titan before it ravages. Those are your only two yep. targets, in my opinion. And we'll have to see. But those aren't even the, the integral parts of the lineup. It's this tiny wisp that's over farmed. Uh, Snaw could very easily. Now, let's not forget, we watched a game the other day where Snaw was were sole possessors of a 20,000 gold lead for 40 consecutive minutes before the game was finally... They were finally able to close the game out. So, in terms of Snaw being able to take a lead and finish finish a game off, they have shown some weakness there. And EG, one of the best at spreading the map and at making that as risky a proposition as possible. So who knows how long this game can end up taking when all is said and done. And Arteezy looks like he wants to shorten it as he runs right into the tiny and the tiny in the IO. And he will be able to use Scorched Earth. Universe is there to help him with the Force Staff, so very kind of him there. And Earth Splitter shot, but should be wide. Is Arteezy up? Just going to TP home. Doesn't like the way this looks and feels. Barely able to dodge the avalanche. Though. Yep, and boots to travel now for the Dark Seer to just help his split push and help his rat. He's basically playing this kind of like a, a rat, <laughs> like just trying to push out lanes and show up to fights. And right now, EG's game plan pretty much is just like high ground, yep. like farm up, farm up, one, and then don't try to take any really like big fights at all. Small pickoffs if the opportunity presents itself, but other than that, only fight uphill. Or a fight, you know, from the uphill position. Servers are going kaput as I'm pinging, and yeah, the packet loss is growing. Dude, this is like the perfect <laughs> ti tiny. So, like, no, no, no. Like, if you zoom in on tiny, this is like, if I can just get that out of frame a little bit. Ah, it's a little too close. It looks like he's wanting to give himself a selfie. Like, if you replace the tree with a camera. Wait, well, how do I like, do this? Like, go to go to showcase mode. Oh, yeah. It's, it, like you just gotta zoom like if I could just trim the tree out a little bit get his eye in it like he totally yeah, looks like a hipster with a comb over giving himself a selfie I see what you're talking about yeah yeah <laughs> let me take yeah, a selfie my space angles my space angles alright we do have a pause and while uh, Trough and I prove once and for all we are the fools you think we are uh, hope you're enjoying the cast and hope you'll keep up with the D2L across uh, the variety of networks um, you, you can use to get your updates be it twitter be it facebook it's d2lgg on both of those and of course here on twitch just hit the follow button and because uh, we don't want you to miss a minute of the action we're winding down in our western division not a whole lot left in the west uh, but we do have our playoffs to look forward to and of course we do have a few more matches uh, after trough and i are going to take a much needed four or five day break and then of course in the first week of january it's ces 2015 Trouf and I will be there in the flash, as will four teams, two from the east, two from the west, at our grand finals at Caesars Palace. Two teams uh, from the east have already been determined, and uh, I'm not going to spoil that right now, but do hope you'll uh, check that out and, and catch the VODs. Oh, oh, good. It's servers again. Um, I was hoping it was just something that was going to come and go. I'm going to ping myself very quickly. Yeah, the packet loss is pretty high. <clears throat> it's like yeah. 50%. Yeah. Ping, not great, but not bad. All right, they're, they're hollering for admins, so we're going to deal with this, folks, and we're going to try to wait it out. In the meantime, listen to New Nautilus by Grammatic. We'll be right back.
definitely can, but they have to be careful. Like, it's not a free win by any means. They have good high, down, high ground defense with the Venno. And like I said, if you get the Doom off onto the Tide, and you can kind of, you know, worm your way back into your base afterwards, and try to drag out the fight that way, you can you can maybe take a fight at your high ground. TC, though, pumping out that damage, trucking that Tier 3 tower with Wisp behind him. And would still really love to see a Vlad's, but he's still doing quite well without it. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Dyer's top barracks has fallen. <laughs> just picked up a DD too, so if they wanted to time, they should just go actually, because they didn't get to even use the Ravage last time. Like that's the only way EG wins a fight is is making sure that the Ravage doesn't come online. And if they still lose a fight with that, I mean they did have the Aegis, so it was much easier, but the point still stands. If you don't have Ravage, their team fight becomes a lot less strong, but they still were able to win and get the rack. So now with the Ravage up, it's gonna be ten times easier. And like I said, DD up on a TC. They're actually gonna try to kill out Mike again. And he's sitting down here. I don't know why he's by himself and not with his team. They maybe can get a kill on him. Maybe they could possibly have a chance to defend high ground. They're pinging him out, and actually, even the wisp is, or the puck is like, "Yo, Mike, get with your team or push out bottom." Or so I don't know what he's trying to communicate, but Mike could be dead here. Uh, let's look around. It was universes, I think, actually. He, yeah, he just cast it. Why? I don't know why. Maybe it was a fat finger. Sure, yeah. Blink upped on the Doom, which is nice. I, I don't know why they don't just 5-man with Tide double Ravage. I, <laughs> like, I don't know. Why, why was Mike farming down there? I think he could just go 5 and... Like, like Peter said, just go 5, press Ravage, and win the game. I think they're trying to overthink this one just a little bit too much.
No, let me ping myself in... Yeah, they are, actually. <laughs> they don't even care. I can actually see stuff, believe it or not. But TC just kept walking back and forth in between a macro pyre and a mystic flare and almost died. Couldn't really control his hero, I'm assuming, but I think I think he should just yeah, call this man. This is over. Yeah, I, well, I've seen a number of times PPD draft these, like, very early to mid-game centric uh, lineups. But they're kind of an all-in in a sense that if you don't hit your timings, as you mentioned, if you don't shut down the enemy that has a superior late game than you, then you just kind of, you're waiting to lose. Or you're waiting for them to screw up, and that's not a winning proposition. Waiting for another team to screw up is your only chance to victory. It's not keeping, it's not playing the game and you're like, you, you don't have any control of the game. It's all out of your control. You have to wait for them to screw up. And I don't think that's the best way to play. Now, obviously, that wasn't his, his you know, he wasn't thinking that coming into the draft, you know, it's not like, all right, guys, we just have to let away from them to screw up. Obviously, he was expecting other things to happen. Um, but I just don't think that the Doom running around jungling was really effective. I don't think he could do enough this game. And I think that Fear just got shut down way too much. But I don't think that's to, to Fear playing badly or anything like that. I, I, not at all. I think that's just good rotations for Bluff and stuff, actually. I yeah. think he realized that he capitalized on, on the opportunity to go gank top, and uh, it worked out three times in a row. So nicely played there. Definitely out draft, I think. I think that's safe to say. But um, this is, you know, EG is known for their uh, how they can perform in long matches or best of threes. They're not your best of yeah. two or best of one kind of team. They're 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 a long tournament drawn out or best of three kind of team. So I, I expect them to bounce back in game. Well, game three coming up. We're going to jump right into that as soon as we can. Thanks so much for being here and being part of the broadcast here at the D2L, guys. I'm AC, and that's Trout. EG going to look to close it out and punch their ticket to Vegas while Snaw, they just need a win to, to put themselves in contention for the playoff picture. We'll find out which is up to the task next. Stick with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 